Hello, makers and crafters, puppet masters, greater creators, and theatrical fabricators. My name's Jack, spelled like yak, here with another video tutorial time. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing. I recently built a pretty cool set of eyes. Here I have the final mechanics. Everything has been completed for this eye rig system. Just get a close up of all the various functions. This cable which pulls the blink, a second cable here which pulls down over this lower eyelid open. There's a spring to return it. These two cables here and here track the eyes left and right. It is a tidy, tight space that I was working in. You can see about how large it is. I mean, I think my thumb kind of gives some indication. I want to show you how I built them. Now, the problem is I was building on a deadline. I wasn't able to film everything. So I wasn't able to get everything into position and, you know, really document the whole process. Fortunately, I got a second opportunity because somebody has hired me to make a pair of those mechanical eyes. Now, the first set of eyes I made were these little 5 8 inch. These are only 12 millimeter spheres, or, or actually, no, they're 15 millimeter spheres, or about um, 14 millimeter, maybe 15 millimeter spheres. I went through this whole process. I'm going to do it again because I'm going to make a replica of that first set of eyes, but I'm also going to make a larger set of eyes using these 25 millimeter spheres or one inch spheres. So I'm really excited because I've got two pairs of eyes at two different scales so I can really show my process for building the other ones and I have time to do it. Now one of the first things that I got to do with the first set was I took a set of uh, the 15 millimeter spheres and I made a mold of them which is this and then I cast them in urethane and I'm gonna do that whole process again for these 25 millimeter spheres. One of the cool things about making a mold like this is that I first just cast the blank circles, the spheres, but then I came back and I did a little bit of carving on it, but I carved out, I drilled out the inside of the pupil and then I very carefully carved a bunch of striations into this. And so then I put these back in the mold and poured over it this. So now I have a mold that goes straight to producing eyes that look like this with the pupil already manufactured. And so I'm going to do the same two steps with these. I'll first cast blank spheres. That way I can make as many spheres as I want. And then I'll carve out the pupils and the irises and make a second half of the mold so that I can make more of them. Okay, the first thing I did is I'm just gonna use the back side of this mold that I made for other purposes because I don't have any little boards to work on and I have a couple of these lying around. And then I'm using clean clay. This is really old clean clay that I've recycled a million times. So I'm gonna recycle it again. Uh, this stuff unfortunately is no longer made, but there's something called Sculptex which is pretty close, which you can get from um, Reynolds Advanced Materials. But I love the old classic clean clay. Unfortunately, they went out of business. Uh, but you can use kind of whatever you want. Uh, the nice thing about this is if you heat it up, it won't change shape. I was just informed by a friend of mine that you can still get original clean clay at motionpictureeffects.com. But the main thing I'm doing is I'm just going to make the first half of the mold. Actually, technically, that's the first half of the mold. That gets made out of clay first, and I do that with clean clay. And um, the big thing about it, the most important thing, is that it contain no sulfur. So whatever you're making, that's that's the thing. There's no sulfur, otherwise it will react quite badly with the platinum-based silicone that I'm going to be using. Now 
Now I need to build up some walls for it. So I'm just using a little piece of styrene and this is one inch or 25 millimeters. These spheres are 25 millimeters. I think I need about an inch and a quarter or close to 30 millimeters. Actually, I'm just gonna use a short end. Cut a bunch of these. Mess that one up a little. Oh well, hot glue will fix it. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna just line these up with the corners and do sort of a radiating pattern. I can reuse this material. I'm only gonna do real light gluing because I don't actually want to wreck anything. I wanna make sure that I can reuse this for other mold boxes in the future because frankly, styrene's not cheap, but it is really useful for the light gluing just enough so that hopefully the silicone won't leak out. This hot glue I'm using, by the way, is kind of a special hot glue. It's white. I use this a lot when I'm doing work with Zote Foam. It's a polyethylene-based hot glue, and I just find it stickier. Hot glue is not a very well-respected glue, <laughs> to say the least, but I feel like this particular stuff kind of solves all those stereotypes or issues that people have about hot glue. But also, if you add a little bit of alcohol, uh, you can usually get alcohol to seep under it and be able to get it to release if you want to. Find that useful. Now I'm going to pour this filled with uh, platinum silicone. First, need to clean up a little bit around the edge just to make sure that I don't leak silicone out. Just sort of making a little seal against the mold wall. I'll end up having to clean up my registration points somewhat. There we go. I could spend a lot more time and make this a much nicer mold, but this is adequate for what I'm doing. This here is my favorite silicone. It's Rebound 40 by Smooth On. It's a 40 durometer platinum based silicone that has a really quick cure time, about an hour and a quarter. It's just really durable, long library life, all those kind of things. I love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill these two containers, not totally to the top, but just enough equal amounts of each. I figure it's about seven eighths of a container per part to fill this mold, just a guess. Ugh. So one of the things I like doing is I like being very, very clean in my silicone operations, and this is not very clean. I like to keep not exactly lab grade conditions, but real tidy conditions, because any spilled material, uncured material, it's just gonna come back to bite you. So I try and clean off my tools, not leave anything on the lips of the container that just makes my life harder later. Okay, now that I have equal parts, scrape the containers as best I can. I like using these little containers because I can really reuse them over and over and over again with these materials. I can generally just pull the silicone out and uh, I don't feel like I'm wasting too much plastic, putting too much plastic in a landfill. One of the problems with this industry, with art making in general, is it is kind of a wasteful industry, so I always feel pretty negatively about just the waste in general. But in particular, a lot of the stuff I do isn't actually for something that will last forever. A lot of it is for advertising or things like that. And so it's just something that will get used once in one photo shoot and then it'll get thrown away. And I, I really hate that. So the least I can do on my end is just be as careful about waste as possible during the, the actual construction process. I think some of the things I make will get to last forever, you know, in a good way, not as in, you know, 100,000 years from now found in a landfill. But a lot of the stuff I've built in my life is, you know, single-use artwork for commercials. And uh, 
I try and mitigate that as much as I can. Reuse your containers, people. That includes the wooden stir sticks, too. I end up reusing this. This is just like a corn dog skewer, but I've been reusing the same thing for mixing silicone for a couple of weeks on this project. Wipe off the excess each time, keep reusing it. So. You can see that this is pretty thick silicone. It's not actually meant to be vacuum degassed. A lot of silicones you have to put in a uh, degassing chamber. But this stuff, uh, it's meant to be brushed on. You can usually get away with not too many bubbles. One thing I will have to waste on this part of the process is a disposable acid brush. There's just no way around that. But uh, the stick at least can keep, keep using and actually gets better and better because it gets impregnated with silicone. It's easier to clean off later. So yeah, there's that. Acid brush. These are only like 10 cents a piece and you gotta pull out all the excess bristles cause they tend to shed. And I'll just get a real small amount and sort of drizzle it on my mold first. And this makes sure that I don't have any bubbles right against the surface. If it's dripping this thin, then all the little bubbles kind of pop. And then once I get to a certain point, I'll just kind of carefully brush it in, covering all the surfaces, pressing it into all the little cavities, try and chase bubbles away. I'm trying to be pretty gentle. I don't want to leave brush strokes on anything. Certainly don't want to leave bristles. Just kind of very gently petting the silicone onto the surfaces and then letting any little bubbles that get trapped kind of escape. Sometimes I'll make extra effort to pop them. Mostly there's no detail on this that I am particularly concerned about. I'll let that sit for a second and then for the rest of it I'll just kind of slowly drizzle silicone into the mold, usually just in one corner until it fills everything up. About here I can start to scrape the container. There might be slightly imperfectly mixed material, but I find that this silicone in particular is very forgiving. You can really get away with a lot of poorly mixed material at least as long as it's not right up against the part here on the outside. And pretty much all of it will cure, even stuff that is just barely touching, which is crazy. I don't know how they did that, but this will just peel right out of the container when it cures. Let's do the other side of the mold. Nice and firm. Now for the tricky part, I need to carefully pull this up. I can use a little bit of alcohol, but it's pretty good. You'll see that just a little bit of isopropyl will usually remove some of the excess hot glue. Usually peels right up. Yeah, just almost falls right off as soon as alcohol gets under there. And now I need to carefully dig out all this clay. One thing to note is my spheres got a little bit too close to the top of the walls here, which means that if I were to pour silicone on here, there's just not very much material. Fortunately, all I have to do is sort of gently move this whole mold wall up. So I'm going to disassemble it a little bit and then basically I'll give myself a little bit of space on the bottom and then put my mold wall back together, hot glue it back together, giving myself another, say, I don't know, eight millimeters-ish, 10 millimeters maybe. Just plenty so that I know that my spheres will be covered. But before I do that, I might as well clean off my edges. Another thing I'm gonna do before I put this in is I should do the release on it with petroleum jelly because it'll be harder to get my brush around this later. I don't wanna get too much on the actual spheres. I will wipe this all down in a moment. I guess I'll just sort of glop it on and then I'll carefully wipe it away with a Q-tip. Real important that the silicone doesn't 
stick to itself. I'll get this real good. This is the back side of the spheres. So there's not going to be that much need to be all that careful because this isn't where the surfaces that everybody will see will be. This is actually where I'll pour into the mold, but I still want it to be pretty good, pretty clean. See if I can gently clean off anything that is too intrusive. If this was the front surface or if this was a mold where it really, really mattered, I could get in here with a lot of detail maybe some alcohol to clean it off, make sure that the part that I'm trying to duplicate is super good, but here I think this will be okay. I feel like there is enough Vaseline on there, and now I can close the mold box around it, see if this is probably this way, I think. Yep, that looks like it works. And again, giving myself about six millimeters all the way around, hold that. Uh, pretty tight while I re-glue this. Let that cool. I'll clean out any extra stuff before pouring the silicone. trying to chase away all the little bubbles that are going to be right up against the part. I have a friend who always talks about pouring the silicone from 12 feet up, which he doesn't really mean, but just the idea that you would make the silicone really get thin, really pour in a super, super wispy tendril. Just get all the little bubbles that might be hiding in it out. This one I'm not going to bother with the brush. This is the second side. It's not, uh, it doesn't have concavities. Everything is kind of popping out. So it's a little bit easier to get it to work without having bubbles trapped in anything. There's just not much for the bubbles to be trapped in, except for maybe the corners right around where the part touches the first part of the mold, the piece that I'm trying to capture or reproduce. That's what I'm calling the part. There's a lot of silicone still left in there, sadly. I wish I had something else that I could mold real quick because I hate to waste that much silicone. But in the grand scheme of things, that's not too bad. This I can just clean off of the table when it's done. This is all mixed silicone, so it'll cure and it'll be fine. It's um, not going to leave a mess or anything crazy. Ha! I remember I do have something I can use. I need to get this guy's teeth. I'm gonna brush some of this wet silicone on here. So I pulled apart the mold, but there was one thing I forgot to do, which was to make spouts while I was uh, creating my mold. So the simple thing to do is I just have this piece of uh, 5 sixteenths, I think it's like 9 millimeter brass rod, and I'm basically just going to cut pour spouts out of the silicone. And voila! That can't always be the solution, but for this one, it worked pretty good. Okay, now to duplicate these spheres. This is the resin I've been using, TC808. It's at bjbenterprises.com. It's only about 70 bucks for a two gallon kit. And it's got a really short pot life, about 90 seconds or two minutes, and then it cures in about 10 or 15 minutes and you can demold it.
great. There's a couple of 25 millimeter sphere duplicates. And if I want, I can still probably use this mold to make um, bonbons or something, some kind of uh, chocolate confection. As with my previous mold, I made two versions. So this is effectively part A. And now I need to take these and carve in the pupil and the iris and then put it back in the mold and pour a second part B of the mold so that I get something more like this, which includes the irises so I can make them repeatable. So this has been part one of a nine part series on building these blinking puppet eyes. If you want to see more, please subscribe and click the little bell icon. Also, if you want to see more content like this, please join my Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, here's my wonderful patrons. Thank you, you guys. This is so great. Look what I'm able to do because of the support of patrons. Patrons hopefully like you. All right. Have a good one. Bye.